such a momentous day for Penn State and for Nidley Nation. And I could not be more excited uh, to share some exciting news with you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to our board of trustees. We have our chair, Skyla, with us. We have vice chair, Kleppinger, with us. We have board members, Paterno and Olsi, with us. Really appreciate your faith in me uh, and all the board members for giving me this great, great honor of being the 19th president of Penn State University starting May 9th. Clearly, I did not anticipate that I would actually be hiring an AD uh, as one of the first things I would do during my interim period. But thank you for your faith and encouragement to begin building my team with this important hire. I also want to say thank you to uh, President Eric Barron and, of course, Sandy Barber. We will celebrate uh, Sandy. Uh, that, that time is coming. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for the great work that they have done. As you all know from the NCAA Constitution, as well as good governance, it's incredibly important that there's strong institutional control through the university president being the one to hire the AD. And I'm so proud that at this institution, that's exactly what we have done. I know the suspense is killing you all because you don't know who the next AD would be. But for a minute, if you don't mind, let me walk you through a little bit of the process that got us here, because I'm sure you have questions about that as well. Uh, when we began this process, I knew the characteristics that I wanted to see in my vice president and athletics director. I wanted someone who understood the legacy of Penn State and understood that we are a place where the student athlete truly comes first both the student and the athlete aspects of their lives. Someone who understood success with honor means a great deal to us, and that we prepare every single student to be successful when the, you know, after the buzzer, whenever that is, when they finish their athletic career, we have given them the life skills and the education to prepare them to be successful. So student athlete first. Wanted someone who would be deeply collaborative to their core because we know that the AD should seek to build partnerships, networks, relationships within the athletic department across our 31 sports, embrace them all, and of course, throughout the university and the larger Penn State community. We knew we must have someone with high integrity. Talk is cheap, everyone says the right words, so we wanted a demonstrated record of someone who acts with the highest integrity. Experience. Penn State is one of the biggest jobs there is for a president or for an AD. It's a destination job. So we knew that we needed an experienced leader. Financial and strategy savvy. You all know the changing marketplace of athletics. I'm not just speaking as a recovering banker, but just as a university president. I knew that I needed someone with very strong savvy in those dimensions. A record of fundraising that's going to be critical as we grow all 31 of our programs. And of course, someone who is deeply competitive and understands that everyone who plays the game wants to do their very best, be challenged, and win. Someone who would be a coach of coaches and the leader of people, that was important. During the process, we also established a search advisory committee. I'll get to it in just one second. Uh, and they talked to their respective constituencies, student athletes, coaches, faculty, the community, and added a few more. They talked about working collaboratively with institutional partners would be a big part, including little things, say, maybe, like helping our transfer students get to us more quickly, more nimbly, as well as build dialogue throughout the university. They asked for uh, someone to continue the work of advancing the athletics organization, someone who could uh, meaningfully interact with senior institutional leaders beyond the president. Transparency in leading the athletics program, effectively communicating to everyone why decisions are made, 
and of course, be a thought leader on academics. After these expectations, I asked my chief of staff, I want to remind you all that this hire is my second superb hire. My first hire, I do not know where he is, is my chief of staff and senior vice president, Dr. Michael Wade Smith. I will confess I was a little disappointed. I told him that he needed to complete this whole process in one month. He almost made it. We took 35 days, but still I give you an A for the outcome, <laughs> Dr. Smith. And I will tell you a little bit about the process. We worked with Turnkey ZRG, a global leader in sports and entertainment. I his, know that Penn, uh, Penn State has had a historical relationship with Turnkey ZRG and helped hire many of our coaches so they knew the culture of the place. Uh, and I also had experience working with them uh, as vice chair of the ACC in hiring the commissioner there. Uh, and for the search advisory committee, and it's advisory, the president makes the call, uh, could not have asked for a better team. Ali Schlegel, student athlete on the women's soccer team and the chair of the student athlete advisory board. With Guy Gadowski, men's ice hockey head coach. Tamla Lewis, the interim athletics integrity officer. And Dennis Scanlon, a distinguished professor of health policy and administration and the NCAAs uh, as designated our faculty athletics representative. He's also a director of the Center for Healthcare and Policy Research. So together, we worked very hard to find someone who exemplifies the best of Penn State and is ready to take it to the next level. That's what every leader wants. How do we go farther? How do we do better? Constantly looking back to what we do well and what we could do better. So this was a tall order, but I know that they deliver. I truly could not be more delighted with the person that I'm going to be introducing to you. Before I turn things over to him and tell you the name, which you do not know yet, <laughs> I want to tell you a few of his accomplishments. This is an accomplished administrator with a 20-year career in intercollegiate athletics. Leadership roles at Boston College, Temple University, Loyola University, Chicago, and Indiana University. Someone who's led an NCAA Division I program with 31 varsity teams has been a champion for academic excellence and an advocate for coaches and staff. Under his leadership, their women's lacrosse team won its first NCAA championship and the first women's NCAA title for the school. Under his leadership, the student athletes set records for cumulative GPAs and graduation rates. And this is someone who gets the academic enterprise, went on to get the terminal degree, a PhD, so appreciates deeply the academic mission, has taught business, sports management, marketing, and is also a former college football student athlete. Incredible experience in coaching, academics, leadership, financial, facility management, fundraising, internal and external relationships. Originally from Illinois, earned a bachelor's degree in sports marketing management, master's degree in sport marketing administration, and doctoral degree in sport management all from another Big Ten University. Much more than all of that, I love that this is a person who understands that when we say we are at Penn State, we say we are, not I am. Understands that we are only as strong as the families and communities we belong to and the families and communities we uplift. So I'm proud to introduce to you Linda's son, Betsy's husband, and the proud papa to Annie and Joseph. Please join me. I feel like this is a draft announcement, don't you? This is kind of cool. <laughs> I'm so privileged to share the Dr. Patrick Kraft, William B. Campbell, Director of Athletics at Boston College, will be joining Penn State on July 1 
as our next Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics and Director of Athletics. Please give him a warm welcome. Um, I'm trying not to get emotional, um, and those of you will see over time, I'm, I'm an emotional person. You'll, you'll notice it on the, the uh, sidelines of our competitions. Um, but uh, this is a really a humbling moment for me um, to, to be sitting here right now. Um, this is a dream come true, and uh, it is hard to render me speechless, but I, I feel that at this moment. Um, I have to thank uh, you know, President Benaputi, Chairman Scott, the Board of Trustees, um, the search committee guys up there, um, everybody who's been involved in this process. Michael, um, it just reaffirmed why I wanted to be here, why it was the right place for my family. Everyone has been incredible. The people have been amazing. The community has been incredible in a very short time. And I am so proud to have the opportunity to work with you, Neely, and to help this institution continue forward. Y'all, you got it right the first time. I, I just hope I can match that. Um, but I, the first time I, I, I met Neely, I just came home and I said, oh, Lord, Betsy, let's hope we're going to get to this moment. Um, it's, it, she's truly amazing, an amazing person. Uh, so I thank you. I thank you. Um, I, I, I want to start, um, I want to thank the people at, at Boston College. Um, it's a wonderful community and it's a great place. Um, this is not about Boston College, it was about Penn State. Um, and I want to thank Father Leahy, our chairman, John Fish, uh, Mikey and Jay Ho, Father Jack. Um, look, I, I am passionate. Um, I got to meet the staff and the coaches earlier today. I love my staff. I love you all, um, but I love my PC staff, and I love those 700 athletes. They worked hard for, for us, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we accomplished. Oh, a very short time, you know. Whenever you think you have a plan, God laughs at you uh, and says, no, this is the plan. Um, so I want to thank them. You know, uh, I saw Sandy here, and she's, she's probably like me. Oh, she's back there. Um, thank you, Sandy. Sandy, for, in our world, we have a small little athletic director world. Sandy is the best of the best. And I am honored to take over and continue what Sandy has done here. Um, I was on the uh, football oversight committee with Sandy. And actually, Sandy, I don't know if Betsy, she told you this. She saw when Joseph was born in the elevator, we were a total mess. We had kids, they flying all over. But Sandy, thank you. And um, I'm going to build off your legacy. Um, let's see if I can get through this one. Uh, I want to thank my family. Um, I don't want to look at them. <laughs> so, guy, I'll look at you up there. Uh, uh, my family is everything. Period. Everything I do here, everything I did in the past is about my family. Um, I'm not going to take shortcuts because I'm not putting them in jeopardy. No one's taking food off my children's table. So we're going to do it the right way. Um, but my brothers and sisters uh, are in Chicago with their my nieces and nephews, and, and I want to tell them I love them with all my heart. Um, so you're going to have to get used to my mom. Uh, she's over here. She'll be here a lot. Uh, and um, and um, you know, Ma, you know I love you. She's. The biggest cheerleader. I think if, she, if the Pope was open, she'd want me. She'd think I'd be the Pope. <laughs> of course, of course, God, why would they take you? Um, and then the the, the, the the three most important people in this room: um, my two Annie and Joseph. Who I'm sure they'll make fun of me for getting emotional. I uh, love you guys, and uh, they are fired up. Coach Franklin brought them on the football field, so that was a big big day for them. Um, and then of course uh, my wife. Don't not here with that. You bet. Just not. Simply put, it's not here. And uh, the last couple days have been absolutely insane, but thank you. I got lost in the hotel this morning, that, if that puts it in any perspective. <laughs> um, and uh, I love you, and thank you. 
So um, enough of that. Um, I'm look at it, athletic departments are a small piece of a greater institution, and I think it is important that we start there. The, the, the athletic department here is part of, of an institution in Penn State that represents academic excellence. It's an institution that is a leader in higher education. It's a top 25 research institution. It's an institution that is steeped in traditions, core values of academics, respect, and integrity. It's an institution that's famously known the largest alumni base in the country. And I would say the most passionate alumni base in the country. The We Are community is powerful. The state college community is powerful. Penn State has it all. We in athletics are a piece of that. And I want everyone to understand that. Because it takes this institution to help you achieve every aspect and every goal you have. I love what I do. I love it. College sports allows us, the folks in the, up there and, and all of us involved, to transform young women and young men's lives. They come to college, 18 years old, and some leave. Now with the COVID rules, some are leaving at 25, it seems. But in that period, we transform their lives. And I don't take that responsibility lightly. And for me, having been a former college student athlete and as a sport administrator, my passion is for the student athlete. Their experience is paramount. Everything will start and stop with the student athlete and their experience here at Penn State. I will promise our athletes, and I, I got to meet Allie, and she's amazing. She's an amazing representation for this institution. But I cannot wait to get in. The best parts of these jobs, and the coaches would echo this, is when you're with the athletes. But I promise them, and I promise them when I see them, they will have the greatest student athlete experience in the country, period. I promise you that. We will focus on the total mind, body, and spirit. When you do that right, you win. We'll focus on the mental health piece, which is a paramount issue in the world, but really with college students, period, not just athletes. We're going to focus and continue academic support, nutrition, recovery, empower them that they all have a voice. No one should ever mute anybody. They have a voice. Use it. Engage in conversation. Be open and honest with one another. We will do everything we can to help the students today, and then whenever they leave our arms and leave this wonderful place of State College and move on to whatever they achieved after. We will continue to excel in the classroom. Look, I have three degrees. Mom probably never thought I'd have three degrees, but it's real. You can only play for so long, and you have to have that degree. And you come to Penn State for that piece of paper. That's important. That diploma. The network, the alumni, that's what it is. We will not waver on academic success. We will have an impact on the state college community and society as a whole. We are 31 strong. Hear me again. We are 31 strong. And we are committed to winning national championships and conference championships in 31 sports. We will continue the tradition of winning we will have success with honor and win. That tradition is Penn State. We are Penn State. And make no bones about it now. And I talk to the coaches. I'm here to win. I'm here to win. And we are going to win. We're going to add to the 80 national championships and the 303 conference championships. We will do this with integrity. We'll do it with hard work, grittiness, toughness. Uh, and we're going to do it with passion, and we are going to have a good time. We're going to have fun now, but we're going to win. We're going to continue to win. I need to talk to Cal and see how he's done it so well, so consistently. That, uh, that, that's, that's the goat. But you'll have that promise. This, this, this department is going to attack every single day with effort, with energy, and a great attitude. Effort, energy, and attitude. You can control those three. Effort, energy, and an attitude. Um, I just can't express to you the excitement I have. I got to meet the staff, and I got to meet uh, the coaches. This is special people. 
And you've got a shot when you have great people, and we have a great shot. And there's amazing people in State College. My kids and I, uh, uh, Betsy and I are excited to be really involved in State College in this community. Um, it means a lot to us, and uh, we are really, really excited. And um, I know I've taken a little bit more time, and so, but I, I do want to tell you a quick story. Not a long story, quick. But Jay May, we came in, um, the old we, the Indiana we, came in and played Jay's team, and um, uh, it was probably my senior year. And we're, we're driving, or I wasn't, um, my mom and dad um, were uh, driving in, in traffic, you know, before anything. And um, my mom was telling me this story the last couple of days. I never heard this. And my, my dad um, leaned over to my mom and said, you know, get ready. We're about to enter the method of college sports. And um, my dad passed it years ago. But he's right. He, we was right. And he is looking down, getting himself ready for the whiteout. <laughs> um, but he is right. This is the mountaintop. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm ready. And now it's time to get to work. And so everybody on campus, I can't wait to meet you all. Alums, I can't wait to meet you all. Um, I thank you all for coming. I really am appreciative of this, and I hope I get to meet as many of you as I can uh, in a short order. But um, thank you. Thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Um, um, and we are. Penn State. We are. Penn State. We are. Penn State. Thank you. You're welcome. And with that, uh, welcome, Dr. Kraft, and we will open up to questions here in the room. Raise your hand, and we will have Paul or, or Chelsea get a mic to you. We'll start with Mark, and we'll come over to Slip John. Hi, uh, Mark Brennan of Lines 247. Uh, I'd like to ask both of you, if I may, can you speak to the importance of having a strong college football program, not only as kind of the face of the university for some of the things you were talking about, Pat, but also in maintaining the broad-based athletic program that Penn State's had over the years? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I think you absolutely nailed it in your question. Uh, maybe I'd add a third dimension. Obviously, it's the uh, program that helps us have the 31 sports, which is important, and we're going to be competitive in all of them. And we have that legacy of success that we need to build on. A third thing that I would say, I mean, this is my president role of, as the president of a land grant university, which is supposed to be about social mobility and economic development. Just think of what Penn State football does for State College, for our surrounding communities. So I'm, I'm mindful of all of those, and it was important to get a leader who gets that and also understands that 31 teams and every one of those teams deserves the chance and the support to win. Yeah, I mean, Penn State, it, Penn State football, right? And what I think you, you, what people miss is one other opportunity to bring 107,000 people onto your campus and engage and create memories. Um, and so it is a driver. Nationally, it drives the brand. And it, it helps all the, you, you, you're, you help in recruiting. Football game day helps recruiting for all the other sports. And I think it starts, and then everything else kind of falls in there. And you can, and Cal has shown it, that it leads to success elsewhere. But Penn State is Penn State football, and it's a big part. John? John Sauber, Senator Daily Times. Pat, how do you balance those financial needs of football with the financial needs of the other 30 sports and knowing that, you know, the money generally is funneled to football here? Well, I don't know that. I, I haven't gotten in the books. Um, I, think I, I, I think it's a really valid question. I, what I would say now, so 12 hours now, or no, really three hours, I, I, I got to look. I'm not avoiding the question. But, but even at BC, where we had 31 sports, right, you've got to weigh what are your wants and what are your needs. And we've got to provide that for everyone. So how do you, how do you combat that? Well, you've got to go raise money, and you've got to generate revenue. Okay? And that's, those are the key critical pieces. And it's having a, a discussion. It, it's, it's, it's having a strategy on how you spend the money and look at the money. Where is every penny spent? So, so right now, i got to look at where the finance is. I, I haven't seen any of that. But um, I think it's important that you know, all right, here's where the money's coming in. How do we continue to use that revenue to offset some of the expenses in other areas? 
um, because everyone has their own challenges, if you will. Every sport has, is unique in its own right. Daniel? Uh, at Daniel Gallon, Mines 24 7. Uh, Neely said the search lasted about 35 days. When were you approached, and how fast did this process move for you? Okay, jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I promise not to cut in if uh, you're asking Pat a question, but I just want to say that during this process, as you all know, it's a limited pool, it's not like a, you know, thousands of people. But I do want to not talk about details of the search for two reasons. One is we promised the candidates that that's not what we would talk about in terms of engaging. The second thing is, unlike faculty, like I'm a faculty member, we have tenure, you know? So for many of the people, if they say, when not just about Pat, but it's a promise I made to everyone, and I want to act with the highest integrity. So those individuals, well, when were you contacted, when did you talk, might put their current employment in jeopardy. As you know, fans are not thrilled to hear, uh, you know, about their ADs or coaches. So I respectfully will tell you, we ran a thorough process and uh, really talked to the best people out there. But respectfully, I ask that we don't do that because it puts other people at jeopardy as well. Ben? Uh, Pat Benjamin, statecollege.com. James Franklin said that he wanted his, or the next AD to be bold and aggressive and approach policy change in the athletic department that might not impact the university at large, but would streamline things on the athletic department to say. How do you define those words yourself, and how do you balance change and you know avoiding doing things because that's the way they've always been? I think you have to, you gotta look over, you really have to do a deep uh, dive. It's a little bit like the finances, right? You gotta go and you gotta look at it completely top to bottom. What, what I think, and James and I have known each other for a while, I think it, it's important to really um, understand the challenges, right? And, and understand where they lie and how, my job is to make sure that the, that the coaches and the student athletes have everything they can, everything they have, excuse me. And then I need to go advocate for them. I need to sit down with, colleagues across campus and say, hey, here's some of the pain points that we're having. Um, how do I, I help that kind of progress through the system that is Penn State? But I can't be afraid to do that. We can't operate in fear. We can't coach in fear. We have to be, and you have to also communicate to the coaches that there is a process to these things. So whatever the, the hurdles or whatever, we just got to accept the challenges to, and, and move them forward. I think change is always difficult no matter what it is. Um, but I, I think it gives you an opportunity to, to take a, a step back and look at the whole picture, right? And say, ah, you know, oh, that's really good, and maybe we need to tweak this. That, that, that works, let's take a new sense. I mean, the, the industry is changing before our eyes, and so we have to be ready, we have to be nimble. Um, I think that's really a key point to every administrator in college sports right now. Just. Hi, Alexis Hughes, Alexis Hughes, Alexis Hughes. You just mentioned the changing landscape in college athletics, specific to the new name, image, and likeness uh, legislation that's been out for almost a year now. What have you learned over the last year about that dur during this time, and what do you plan on bringing to Penn State to really harness, as you mentioned before, you know, the large brand that Penn State is and helping student athletes navigate and capitalize off those opportunities? You know, that's a great question. I wish I had a, a, like a great answer. I knew what it is because it's changing so much. What I've learned in, in the past year is there's a lot of sharks in the water and they're attacking and, and we have to protect our athletes because there's a lot of things happening that I, candidly I don't really agree with. Um, I think the NIL legislation was great. I really do. I'm a believer in it. I think athletes should absolutely have the opportunity to, to, uh, to monetize their name image and like this. Well, I do have an issue with people just calling others on rosters, offering them money, and then go hit the portal. And that's what's happening. And we have to find a way to fix that. Um, I think that's gonna be the biggest challenge. Now, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna look at what, what's in place once again. I, I, you know, I will say we had great success. I, I, well, I'm really proud of how we handled it at Boston College. Um, I can only go for the, you know, what I know. Um, and, and really putting the, the, the structure in place for, for the athletes to maximize uh, their brand and their opportunities. We gotta protect the athletes though. You pay taxes on that money you get, we all know, everybody in this room knows that. And, and I think that's a really key point to it. And, and putting your name on something is, is putting your name on a brand. And what do you represent? Who do you represent? Not just the Penn State brand, who is who you are? Does that represent you? And so I think that's, that is gonna be, I do think the market will self-correct in the next 
24 months. I think it's inevitable. Um, but I, I, you know, it's, it's one of the things we're going to have to dive into right away. You're one of the few athletic directors that comes um, with a hockey background yeah. of, of time spent at Boston College. Um, I know guys here, so this may be a loaded question to answer, but where does that fit into the piece of the puzzle for you? You know, oh. it's, it's always kind of been there financially, but obviously success can bring a lot of different things. It really can. Look at guy. I, I, we just had the, the go. The greatest of all time retired, Jerry York in hockey. He's won more games than anybody in the, in the country. So I am... College hockey uh, is an amazing sport. I love it. I love it. I told Guy, we're going, we're going to get to the Frozen Four. Um, there, this is a, this is a strong area for hockey. And what I got to do is I got to help Guy get there. I got to help him understand, that, you know, what, what are his things that we can help get him there. But Guy, uh, I mean, I think hockey is, is um, it's, it's awesome. And it has a great following, very, very loyal. Um, it's, it's like wrestling, very loyal fan base. And when you can do it, you can do it really well. And, 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 and where, those, where that stuff really helps a department, helps a culture, it helps everything when you start to win, right? And, you, and it helps development. Um, that's broad-based programming, when you're, you're winning top to bottom. And so, yeah, I'm excited to get in there. Guy was fantastic. I'm excited to get with him to, to, to help. Uh, Thomas Frank Clark, Boy Illustrated. I, this may be a bit of an unfair question, but fans are very passionate about Beaver Stadium one way or another. Um, so how do you view improving game day experience for fans at an older, but as you mentioned, uh, destination stadium versus, you know, the challenges of retrofitting or upgrading all those things in the future? And what would you like for a timeline on those decisions to be? Well, it's funny. We talked about it. And, and uh, it's funny. I, I've been a fan here. I've been on the sidelines and I've been in the field uh, at Beaver Stadium. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna have to walk through that and talk through it. I will tell you one thing that's not gonna change: that visitor's locker room. I hate it when I'm a visitor, but I love it now. <laughs> uh, that thing is tight, and I would take the banners away when you walk in the concourse. So the fans, they did that the second time. I want the fans to, to feel it, and I will keep that roar. Man, that roar is awful as a visitor. You hear that? Um, when we get into, I gotta get in. I gotta really get into it. I think there's a lot of things that you can do in the short term. It really, it, 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 BC Stadium was the same way. A lot of older stadiums are like that. You just really gotta, you, you gotta really analyze that. I don't have an answer for you. I'm not trying to avoid it. It's something obviously we're gonna have to figure out. But I, I think there is great opportunity there. Um, and I, there are some things you can modernize it right now, short term. Uh, you know, we're in Boston. Fenway has done an amazing job with what they've done. They've monetized Fenway um, to, to really generate revenue. Um, you know, obviously, the stadium is not just an athletic director decision. Uh, but I, 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 there is some there's some nice things in that building if you're you're a home team. I will say that having lived that several times. John, Pat, how do you view? You mentioned, of course, the Penn State being Penn State football. How do you view men's basketball then within the scope of the athletic department and sort of ensuring that it becomes a destination job for a coach like Mike Shrewsbury? I, I agree 100%. Look at, I, I've known Mike, I, I got to know Micah recently and you, first off, Sandy hit, hit a home run. He's the real deal and he is special. And what we have to do is change what people think about Penn State basketball. We have to, this is the place to come and, and you can be successful. And so I think that's the first thing. And Micah has to have, uh, and, and this goes to all of our coaches, the, the resource and the ability to go and change that perception. And so, I, look at it, he is, he's the real deal. Um, and, you know, you, you know that, I, got, I got lucky with that one, with, with the, the Sandy did that one uh, wonderfully. Uh, but I think you're right, I think, and that one takes time, right? You, you, you've got to get people and, and young athletes to, to really understand, oh wait, I can achieve everything here. Um, and uh, I'm excited to really dive into that uh, because both coaches deserve that. You can win in basketball. You can. Are there other questions in the room? Uh, Ryan. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait for Mike. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Ryan Parsons, Oliver State. Um, Sandy has said that she was in favor of expanding the college football playoff. Is that a sentiment that you echo? And where do you see the future of? Uh, alignment and playoff expansion going. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, look, I think it's going to get there. Um, I think it's absolutely going to get to uh, expanding uh, to the playoff. 
the way I look at it is, it don't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I'm getting four. That's what my goal is. Uh, but you know, if it expands, that's great. We have it down here, and you're 12. Okay. Um, but I, I think it's eventually going to get there. I really do. I mean, that's just this is truly the Packer House opinion, and you know, take from what it was. But I, I think it'll get there. I think it's just there is a lot though that we have to figure out. It's a lot of games, and there's wear and tear on on the athletes' bodies. I mean, the, the, if you really look at it, and 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 I'm not gonna, this is a longer conversation, obviously, and being it, but I think there's a lot to have. It's not just as easy as you flip the switch and you play more games. Um, I, I do think uh, I do think it's eventually going to get there, but I think the process is taking its course um, to to do it. Um, uh, I, I, you can just kind of read where the, the the narrative is going, and that's done at the the CFP level, so we're kind of you know in the riding that. Um, but my approach here is control your own destiny. Go win game. Now we're going to move to. Now we're going to move to our Zoom component. Uh, we will start with Greg Pickle, and then our next one will be Mark Wilgenrich. Greg? Thanks, Chris, and thank you both for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, you have about, I guess, what, two and a half, three months until you start here at Penn State. What will your priorities be over the next few weeks, months, to get ready to take over in July, and how much of that learning that you've been talking about uh, will take place over that period? Uh, you know, I appreciate that question. I think it's really good. I think it's always, uh, it is equally as important how you leave a job how you and how you start a job. I have to close everything up in Boston, and, and they deserve that. Um, my student athletes there deserve that. So, so the month of May will really be focused on, on making sure that they're situated and I'll do everything that they ask of me. I do think June will be that period. I, you know, I, I'm... It's hard for me to sit here, actually. I'm kind of just, I want to get to work and I'm asking questions. But it will give me a chance um, to be able to really dive into some of the things that's just been brought up here. Where, where are we at from an NIL perspective? Okay, what are the issues um, uh, that we really got to walk up to from a student athlete you know, welfare perspective? Um, finances really giving. So it gives you a little bit of time. But my goal is July 1, I'm off and running. And so I got that month. Um, to really uh, uh, figure out kind of some, uh, our strategy moving in in year one, uh, you know, and things, you know, things change. Uh, but I, I, I'm anxious to take that time to kind of dive in. I'll probably be, a, you know, and, 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 and Sandy's here. I'm, gonna, I got, I, I'm very fortunate to have Sandy to, to lean on because, you know, that's, that's a blessing. You don't, you, you don't always get that. And so to have that kind of, hey, what, 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 what's this look like, you know, and have that discussion with her, which is really helpful. And I also got a couple field trips I got to go on, uh, which that gives me the time, and I got some recess students that I have to do, which is awesome. We'll go to Mark Wilkenrich, and then we'll go to Dave Jones. Hi, right, Matt. Thanks for your time. I wanted to ask you, um, how did Matt Rule figure into your process of learning about Penn State and this job? Yeah, Matt. I love my man, Matt. Uh, yeah, good draft yesterday. Um, you know, Matt and I and Julie and Betsy and the kids are very close. I and mean, we, we kind of, we started together in this, you know, he was that coach, I was, you know, at Temple and AD and, and our relationship, it's like, we're, we're really like brothers. Um, he, you know, that's, that, he really did help. You know, we talked about it a lot. And, and I'll tell you an anecdote, I, I'm not a, but Betsy rolled, when, when Sandy made her decision, she looked at me and she said, that's the one, right? Because Matt and I talked about, I would I, I mean, candidly, I've been in the shadow of Penn State for seven years when I was at Temple. And you want to beat Penn State. You want to. And um, Matt's a good sounding board. And when this process kind of came to fruition in a very quick window, he was a wonderful sounding board. What am I walking into? You know, I know what it looks like, but what am I walking into? And, but Matt's, Matt, bigger than Penn State, Matt is, we talk about just how to run programs and how to do things and how to, you know, live this crazy life in athletics that we have. But, um, you know, Matt's a brother to me and, and uh, I'm proud of him. I was, I'm proud of him and what he's doing. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's doing well for himself, uh, my man. Uh, but, you know, he's just, a, he's just, a, he's got like, hey, you gotta go meet this guy now and you gotta go here. And the chilies that Julian he met at doesn't exist anymore. They told me that, uh, his wife, so. Um, but you know what I would say is all the Penn State people that I met through Matt in time and our friendship, it really showed me a lot. 
Um, and it's funny how all those conversations from when I started with Matt lead to this point. With no direction, right? Not about, just in general, about Penn State and what it meant. Dave Jones and then Rich Garcilla. Mark took my question first of all. <laughs> being here. Um, what was your experience like walking on in football at Indiana? And what, if anything, did it teach you oh. about this this world that you're in now? Uh, that's a that's a great question. It wasn't necessarily. I've just been a grinder. I've had to work really hard. Um, so the walking on piece was, you know, I was, I was gonna do it. I was, you know, I was determined. Uh, I wanna play in the Big Ten. And um, I, I, I love my alma mater. And, and what, what I learned from that, what you learn from, I'll just talk about football, but sports, you learn that hard work. You learn the grittiness, you learn toughness, you learn how to get overcome obstacles. And I learned that in spades. Um, I was around wonderful, people and, and great mentors, um, um, many of which are around, that, and not, not just in the coaching staff, whether it was starting staff or academics, uh, academic folks. Or, um, and all, of, by the way, when this broke, um, text me, and we're so happy. I think that speaks volumes, because we're competitors now. And, uh, or, you know, and, but I learned a lot uh, from that experience. And, and, and honestly, I think it helps me do my job today. Because I understand, I, even though it is a far more difficult world that, that these athletes live in, because we didn't have cell phones and if we didn't want to answer the phone, we just didn't answer the phone. We don't have people having accessibility to us like we did then. I think these athletes go through a far more difficult situation, but I also understand, at the end of the day, work hard and good things happen. Get after it in the weight room. Do the right thing. Show up for class. Be kind to people. You want to get people to support you in the stands? Don't be a jerk. Go and be people, get to know people on campus. Get to be friendly with people in the dorms and the apartments. You know, I was a backup linebacker and played the special teams, but I had a, 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 a section rooting for me just because I was social. And so I think those things are time out. That, that is what it is. That's just college life. And, and I also learned that like college athletics is important, but you've got to be a college student too. You've got to embrace everything that is Penn State and everything that we have to offer. <clears throat> So all of those things, I think, really frames how I approach every day in this job. Um, but there's challenges now that are, are way different, and we've got to understand that. We'll go two more questions. Rich Garcella, then John Petitnock. Uh, I would just like to ask, how often did your paths cross in the ACC, and how, how and when did you establish First establish a relationship. Uh, actually, our paths didn't really cross in terms of our spending time together at all. I knew, obviously, and uh, um, you know, conferences, things like that. Remember too that with COVID, a lot more of the interactions that normally would have happened didn't. So it was Zoom and so on. But I certainly knew of the reputation. You know, presidents. We are a small network too, so you just talk. So I knew of the reputation, but didn't really have any uh, meaningful interaction. And then our last question will go to John Petitnoff. Hey, Patrick, welcome to Penn State. Uh, John you. here from the Football Letter. Um, hey, I don't typically ask two-part questions, so I hope you don't mind me making an exception today. Uh, the 1999 game at Penn State, I think that's the game you're referring to when Indiana yeah. played here. Uh, just what specific memories do you have from that day at Beaver Stadium? And then secondly, Dave kind of took my question, but if you don't mind just going into a little bit more detail, like how exactly did you go from being a walk-on to a scholarship athlete, and kind of how did that, um, like how were you able to do that and have that type of impact with the team at Indiana? All right, you may have to help me answer. I've been hitting the head a lot. You know, the, the old school <laughs> linebacker, four three, you fill a lot of ISO. So I'll answer the first question first. My takeaway, <clears throat> well, the roar, uh, and, and Jay, we we had we played tough. Uh, it came down to the quarterback. Didn't they? Our quarterback played. Antoine was real. He was a real deal. Um, you know, I, I, honestly, my biggest takeaway um, was actually Jay's dad. Uh, we, you know, every time you played Penn State, you didn't know if it was the last time you were going to meet Joe Paterno. 
<laughs> so the game's over. And no matter how upset we were that we lost, there was a line to shake Joe's hand. And I was one of those people. And I called my dad, said I met Joe Paterno. And uh, now, the second time I met Joe Paterno was 12 hours later because our plane didn't take off. So we were stuck on the Terramac. The Indiana football team is stuck on the Terramac, uh, sitting on our bags. And this is the power of State College. Every hotel room was gone. Obviously, we were the homecoming. And uh, every hotel room was taken. And so the entire football team was in the, uh, the uh, conference room, uh, sitting there overnight, literally overnight, sleeping on chairs. And uh, it was miserable. And we did get ice cream from the creamery, so that was the first time I experienced that, which was a win. Um, but at about 6 in the morning, um, Coach uh, came in and talked to us. And it was pretty incredible, actually. That, doesn't ha that didn't happen. That doesn't happen. And he came and spoke to the team. And he's like, hey, I'm sorry that this happened. And, and uh, it, you know, we in fact, when, I, when this came to fruition, my roommates, my teammates talked about it. We still talk about that moment. Like, oh man, remember we got caught in the, the lot. And that's a very memorable that, that is a very memorable game actually because of all that. And uh, so that, that would be my biggest takeaway from that moment. Um, oh, uh, Indiana, I, I don't think there's any secret sauce to it. Work hard. Um, you know, I think yeah, look, I'm an undersized linebacker, but I'll hit you in the mouth. And uh, I'm aggressive and I play linebacker and I love the Big Ten. I love what I do. Uh, like I said, I love college football. I love playing football, and the game means a lot to me. But I, I just worked hard. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if there's. A, I'm, just, I'm not avoiding your question. I just don't know. It, it was. Um, I'm just blessed that they. I know mom and dad were very happy that they gave us a scholarship. Um, but it was something that um, I worked really hard at. Um, I worked hard in the off season. I had to work hard. I had to work hard. Um, and so I think that's why I'm here today. Actually. Hope that answers your, your Indiana question. Thank you very much. Welcome, Dr. Kraft. Thank you, Dr. Bendapudi. We're Thank going you. to um, have a, a quick little uh, photo opportunity here. Uh, we're just going to clear a couple of things so that it's a little bit of a clearer shot. So, Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.